With pneumonia, we can have two different types of pneumonia. We can have community-acquired pneumonia. So that's just uh, when a patient is out um, and about, not in the hospital, and they get pneumonia from someone else or from, uh, yeah, from someone else. And then we've also got hospital-acquired pneumonia, and that is considered our fault. We've got so many different ways that we can prevent pneumonia that we um, should be able to uh, completely eliminate hospital-acquired pneumonia. In fact, I think that that, is, that could possibly be one of the never events is that a patient gets pneumonia. Um, some assessment findings that we're going to see with somebody with pneumonia is um, we're going to see decreased breath sounds. Um, we're going to hear fine bubbling or popping sounds. The difference between, we've got, uh, we can also see crackles in the lungs or ronchi. The difference between these, the way to remember, is you've got ronchi and the bronchi. So the ronchi is going to be heard more around the bronchi section, and then the crackles are going to be heard more on the bases of the lungs than anything else. Um, bronchi is also really loud. Um, it sounds sometimes it even just sounds like really loud, um, really full breath sounds, which um, still is unhealthy. Um, we're going to see an increase in respiratory rate, um, dyspnea, because they've got all that fluid infection in the lungs that are going to. It's just going to be harder for them to breathe and get that um, real good gas exchange that they need. Um, we're going to see formitis. Formitis is just like a. The like technical definition is a vibration that's kind of transmitted throughout the body. Um, we're also going to see yellow or green sputum. Uh, the reason behind that is because um, that's kind of how infection is presented in the lungs as it changes the color of the sputum. Um, hypoxemia, we're going to see pleuritic chest pain or um, hoarseness on inspiration. Uh, decreased level of consciousness or confusion, and that's mainly with the elderly. So some different labs that we're going to see, we're going to see a chest x-ray, and a lot of times that is abbreviated like this, CXR, just so you know. And then we're going to see maybe a bronchoscopy as well, which um, lots of times people get kind of confused. We've got endoscopies, endoscopy. An endoscopy is just kind of a generalized term for uh, all of the tubes and lines that kind of go into the body um, with a camera at the end. So we've got a colonoscopy, a sigmoidoscopy, um, we can have an EGD, and then a bronchoscopy also can be considered uh, an endoscopy, just so you know. Um, some different medications. We are going to start our patients first on a broad spectrum antibiotics. Of course, you want to get your sputum culture prior to starting any antibiotics or any cultures that we might need um, that the doctor would order. We want to get them prior to starting antibiotics so that we don't skew um, the results. Um, so we start them on a broad spectrum antibiotics first, and then we're gonna until the smear is or when the smear is uh, finished then we're going to start them on a more specific antibiotic that they can take for six weeks when they're home. Um, we're also going to put them on oxygen. Lots of, these, lots of times these patients have really low oxygen levels because they just don't have the um, ability to exchange through all of that fluid. So some nursing interventions. Mainly, um, these can be used again after um, a patient is diagnosed with pneumonia, but these should also be implemented prior to anybody getting pneumonia because they can really help um, decrease your chance of getting hospital-acquired pneumonia. So you've got incentive spirometer, often um, just abbreviated as IS. You've got uh, turn, cough, deep, breathe. You need to do this at least every two hours, um, having them turn um, to kind of get uh, positional uh, postural drainage. You want to start them ambulating early. We want to make sure that our patients are getting up and moving around. It's not only going to help their respiratory system, it's going to help their integumentary, cardiac, all of those other um, systems are going to be helped by uh, ambulation. Um, we want to encourage um, pain management. Uh, that's mainly for patients who have like had like an abdominal surgery, something that's going to make it harder for them to breathe um, so that they can do their turn, cough, deep breathe and uh, avoid any hospital acquired pneumonia. Um, just in the acute um, stages of pneumonia, we want to put them on bed rest so that their oxygen um, requirements kind of go down a little bit. We want to increase the fluids to help uh, decrease the viscosity of the, of the uh, secretions in the lungs. And we want to get, of course, again, the sputum culture prior to the antibiotics.